be addressing members of the NAACP today at the group's yearly conference, which is taking place in Houston, Texas. He's appearing one day after Mitt Romney's speech was booed in parts there, uh, and booed specifically when he promised he'd be repealing the health care law. Listen. I'm going to eliminate every non-essential, expensive program I can find. That includes Obamacare, and I'm going to work to reform and save... That's a long 15 seconds when you're getting booed, I'll tell you that. Uh, he um, uh, Gaining favor at the annual event is, uh, is obviously a challenge for any Republican nominee. Uh, could be a problem uh, for President Obama as well. Um, his decision not to appear at the conference could come with its own backlash this November. Let's get right to CNN's contributor, Roland Martin. He's been covering the event all week. Before we talk about President Obama and his uh, not showing up at the convention, let's talk a little bit about Mitt Romney yesterday. We heard some booing, obviously, when he talked about Obama. Care. Uh, I know that at the end there was half the crowd roughly apparently uh, stood to, to cheer. Uh, how overall would you say was the reception for him? Uh, well, I won't say they stood to cheer. In fact, when he came out, half the room stood up, applauded him, being polite, half didn't. And the same thing happened when it was all over. Uh, there were certainly moments during his speech uh, where he did get some applause when he talked about the importance of family, how he was going to make that a priority of his administration. And then when he said he was going to defend traditional marriage. Also, when he talked about education, allocating federal dollars to each student, allowing parents to send their kids to any school they they want to saying that kids should not be stuck in low performing schools and so that's where he got uh, a lot of the applause lines on uh, but certainly when he began to criticize the president uh, we talked about uh, health care but also what was interesting so that when he made this comment about you know who but frankly who would do more for African Americans as president I'm your guy pretty much folks started laughing when he made that comment all right well let's talk a little bit about after the speech um, he had uh, he was in Montana talking to donors and he said this, when I mentioned I'm going to get rid of Obamacare, they weren't happy, that's okay, I want people to know what I stand for, and if I don't stand for what they want, go vote for somebody else. But I hope people understand this, your friends who like Obamacare, you remind them of this, if they want more stuff from the government, tell them to go vote for the other guy, more free stuff. But don't forget, nothing is really free. It has to be paid for by people in the private sector. When I spoke to the lieutenant governor of Florida a little bit earlier this morning, she said, listen, he's being consistent in his message across the board. What do you think he's saying there? Uh, I think what he's, he's using coded language when he uses they and free. Uh, we've seen that happen before with, with, with Republicans. Here's the point that I would also raise. Uh, a lot of people in the room yesterday saw that they also work in the private sector. They also are small business em uh, owners. In fact, African American women have the fastest rate of small business owners in this country. And so, who is he talking about when it comes to they? Uh, also, also, let's look at corporate welfare. I remember when General Colin Powell spoke at the Republican Convention uh, in Philadelphia in 2000, and he said, don't criticize free stuff or welfare, but he said nothing about corporate welfare. And so, I would love to hear Mitt Romney talk about the, free the freebies we give his corporate buddies in the private sector and say, let's get rid of those things as well. I doubt he'll be saying that. I'm sorry, Roland. Hey, it's Will. Just so I'm clear, you're saying he's using the term they and free as code for what? No, what I'm saying is when he's saying they, uh, we're right. talking about and free, I'm saying that has been coded language that we have heard before. Coded for what? From, excuse me, uh, I'm going to make the point. From Republican candidates speaking of either poor people, speaking of African Americans, we can talk about, I remember the image of the welfare queen going back to the 80s, what that looked like, and what I'm saying. This morning on the Tom Jordan Morning Show, I interviewed Sophia Nelson, who was a GOP uh, Hill general counsel, longtime Republican, and she also said this is one of the problems that Republicans use when you use certain language speaking to certain groups. That's what I'm saying. Well, and I will say, Will, you and I have had this conversation before about the dog whistle. You like to say that, you know, there are sort of these conversations that you think I can hear that you can't hear, and they sort of go by you. We have had that, uh, I call that actually an out and out fight at times. You um, fighting? Never, never. Dis disagreement? <laughs> Disagreement. Anyway, I want to ask you a question, Roland, before I let you go, about President Obama. He is not going to be uh, talking right. to the audience at the NAACP today. Uh, Joe Biden will be uh, giving a speech today. Do you think there's going to be backlash for the president on that? 
Uh, there will not be backlash in terms, I think, at the polls, but I can tell you right now, I talked to a number of people, board members, as well as uh, just regular attendees and delegates uh, who definitely are not happy the president's not there. This is the third consecutive year the president has not spoken to the NAACP. He did speak in 2009 uh, for their 100th anniversary. He is going to be speaking to the National Urban League, uh, but they certainly believe that with voter suppression being a critical issue out there, with the NAACP focusing on social justice, the president should be there. Of course, AG uh, Attorney General Eric Holder was there uh, on Tuesday. Uh, but look, I've heard it. Uh, I've heard it talked about on, on so social media. Some people say, hey, you know, he's busy. He really doesn't have to go. Others say, you know what? If you've gone to the human rights campaign, you've gone to Latino elected officials, you've gone to other groups, this is an important constituency in a tough, close election. He should be there. And so, by doubt, from a standpoint. And Mitt Romney said, hey, if I'm elected, I'll be here next year talking uh, to you again. Yeah. Yeah, but, I, but I'm sure if he comes next year, maybe he'll talk about free stuff if he comes next year. Uh, <laughs> All right, Roland, thank you for that. Okay, appreciate it.